Hello, everybody, and welcome to Programming with Ruby, episode 14, YAML. I'm Tyler, and this video is brought to you by manwithcode.com. In this episode, I'm going to be telling you what the heck YAML is and why you should use it, and more specifically, how you store data with YAML. So, let's get started. What is YAML? YAML stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language. A little weird. I don't, I don't completely get that, but whatever. In the most basic sense, it's a way of storing data for later use. Now, why the heck should you use YAML? Let's say you're writing a game. You could save your player's progress to a YAML file, or maybe if you're writing an application with a couple different preferences settings, you might be able to save your the user settings to a YAML file so that way they don't have to re-enter it every single time. And using YAML instead of creating your own text-based format creates more portability, portability and uh, I don't know, just better because in, because if you ever need to have another application use your files, they don't have to write their own custom file loader. They can just use a YAML library and load it from that. Um, it also makes editing files by hand pretty easy, so it's not like if you decide to use YAML, your files suddenly become cryptic. No, if you need to edit them by hand, it is very, very possible. Alright, so enough of all the theoretical talk. Let's get started. Some actual code. How do you go about storing data? So let's say we're writing a text editor, not too different from the one I'm using now. And there are a few preferences the user can change. Maybe we want the user... Um, and we definitely want the user to be able to save their preferences so they don't have to change them to what they like every single time they start that application. So we decide, as the wonderful developers we are, to use YAML. And we decide to use YAML to store, to store and let's say our preferences look like this. Preferences, and it's in the form of a hash. So we have word wrapping which is set to true. We have font size, which is set to 20. And we have font, which is Arial. And I don't know if I covered it before, so I'm going to cover it now. True and false are both like types, like strings in Ruby, so you can use those if you want to. All right. Now, to save that to YAML, we're going to have to require the YAML library, so require YAML. And this comes with all installations of Ruby, so you don't have to install it as a gem or anything. So, and then we'll do using our previously learned skills from the last video to work with files, we're going to do file.new prefs.yaml or YML. And they can be either YML or YAML, that's the extension for YAML files. So we have output, and we'll do output dot put s yaml dot dump at preferences and output dot close. Alright, so now we run that using Ruby example dot rb, that's what I named it, I don't know what you named it. And uh oh. I did something wrong, I'm sorry. Equals file.new. I I apologize. Can't believe I screwed that up. Alright, now the program worked that time. We go down there and we have the preferences.yaml file, which looks like this, very human editable. If I wanted to change that to false or something, I could do it. And but now that we've saved this, let uh or sorry, now that we've created the file, let's pretend that now we're on to the next part of our application where we need to uh where you need to read in the files when the program starts. So, how would you go about doing that? Well, we definitely need to keep the require YAML. And we don't need some of this. And so, output equals file.new. I'm using the same file, so prefs.yaml. And this time we're going to read from it. And then we do at preferences equals yaml.load out output.read, again using the skills you learned in the last video, and output.close. Now, make sure it works, we're going to do put s at preferences, and there we go, and that doesn't look so great, so preferences.inspect, yes, hashes have an inspect method too, 
And there we go. We can see how it worked. Uh oh, they don't? Oh, I spelled that wrong. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. And very nice. Now, don't think, not for a minute, that you can only save things like hashes, strings, stuff like that. No, you can actually save objects too, which is pretty cool. And let's see if I can, how far undo goes, and see if I can bring that back. Haha! -ha. Alright. Now, so let's say we have a class, and for some reason we're going to call this class, um, I don't know, person. And in an initialize, it's going to take their name, and at name will equal name. And we'll do Tom equals person dot new. And we decided we want to save Tom to a file. Alright, I need to name Tom. Huh. Tommy. Alright. I'm gonna do that and if I wrote that right and I did reload that. And there we go, that's what it looks like saved as YAML file, and you can do the same thing and reload it. Now a word of advice, when you're saving things, it's really very, very handy and useful to keep things in a hash instead of something like an array, because a hash allows you to do things like hash, uh, word, wrap, wrapping, which is a lot more, explains what it is a lot better than saying, than having an array that would just be, and word wrapping would be at place zero. It's a lot more, you know, it's, it's it's easier to figure out for any other developer, so use a hash if you come to that choice, if you have to save more than one thing. And that is actually the end of the episode. Very short, very sweet, very to the point. You can probably start using this today if you want to, if you have the need to save files. So if you like these videos, donate. I need the money. These videos are costing me money. The least you could do would be to donate. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about anything related to Man With Code or these video tutorials, you can leave a comment on this page or email me at tyler at manwithcode.com. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.